there's uh, youth programs that are developing the kids. Uh, you mentioned that through those programs they get a lot of repetition, a lot of short course sure. um, uh, competition. You know, is there, you know, and these are the advantages. What are some of the, I, I like to call them tools, mm -hmm. that the youth sailors are not getting yeah. that uh, your program is having to work a little bit yeah. harder at? You know, you know, when you can, when you have a, you take a kid that comes out of a college program, having been highly successful, uh, there's some things that, that but, but but has not had exposure to Olympic sailing. You know um, that 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 sailor is going to understand, um, you know, getting to the first wind shift. They're going to understand boat handling. They're going to understand the starting line. They're going to understand uh, mark roundings. Uh, and they're probably going to understand their rules fairly well, also. They're not going to understand long course tactics versus short course tactics. They're probably going to need to learn a little bit more about tuning a rig and maintaining a boat. They're going to have to learn plenty about managing their own logistics because in college, you know, the programs are, are really well organized now, at least a lot of them are, where, you know, there's great coaches and there's, and there's schedules and you show up on the weekend and all the boats are there and you're ready to go. You have to be much more uh, self organized at the Olympic level. Now, we compensate for some of that, but not all of it. So, you know, there's there's on-the-water skills like the tuning and the speed and the sail selection and the, and the long course uh, fleet management and course management. And there's also the onshore stuff of just how do I run this business of my Olympic campaign. And, you know, those things are the reason that in 2007 we launched this U.S. sailing development team. Uh, we're not going to we're not going to, and we don't want to, have kids completely ignore the other sailing that they're doing. But what we really want to do is we want to uh, accelerate their learning curve so that when, while they're doing their college sailing, they're also doing some Olympic sailing and they're also getting an Olympic education so that when they come out of their college program, that they're not starting from square one at the age of 22. Um, now, some kids will choose Olympic sailing exclusively over college, and that's fine. Not, not college, but college sailing. Um, and that's fine, uh, you know, um, and if that's their choice and their family's choice, that's great. But what we're really trying to build is for the kid who wants to do college sailing but also has an Olympic goal, we want them to be growing in sort of parallel tracks through their four years of college. And then when the time comes and they decide they still want to pursue an Olympic dream, great. Then they jump in full force, but they're, they're already fairly far along. It would seem like that... You would want to look at also what benefits exist in the United States that y y the Olympic sailors can leverage. Sure. Uh, I no mean, doubt. there's great youth sailing programs, great college sailing programs. Yep. The Olympic sailing is almost this separate entity, yep. but there's a whole world of one design racing yep. that goes on yep. in the U.S. where it would seem lessons can be learned from that as well. There's tons of cross-training opportunities in the United States. Um, you know, the, the one the one thing to keep in mind, though, is if a sailor is really serious about Olympic sailing, the, the Olympic sailing world internationally is is one of you know full-time training and hyper hyper focus. So while we, cross training is great, and a lot of our top sailors do it. I mean, Anna Tunnicliffe and Molly Vandemore just went and got 12th, I think, at the Open Snipe Worlds. You know, that kind of cross-training is great, but at the end of the day, the vast majority of your time does have to be in your Olympic equipment. I mean, that's just, you know, the, the top sailors from the other countries are spending 200 days a year on the water, you know, and there's just no replacement for that. And, and while going and doing a Melges 32 in Key West is a great experience, I'm sure you can pick up some things, fleet racing a Melges 32 is not going to help you fleet race your 470 better. It's just not going to. Um, so so I, I think there is some benefits of some cross-training, no doubt. Uh, and lessons learned and all those great things. But at the end of the day, uh, Olympic success comes down to time in your equipment of choice.